Think about the motion of a Ferris wheel. If we were a rider on one of the carousels, we could track our motion all the way around the circumference of the Ferris wheel. And this would be very similar to how we would rotate our terminal arm around a unit circle. This is a great opportunity to apply our knowledge of the sine wave to model this motion. If we plot the height of a carousel versus time, we can create a sine graph where the y-axis is the given height and the x-axis is time. However, there are some other elements we need to consider first. Let's start with the height of the Ferris wheel. Typically a Ferris wheel will be lifted off the ground some amount to allow for clearance of the carousels as they rotate through the bottom of the circle. Thus, if we consider the bottom frame of our slide here to be the ground, we can draw the height from the ground like this. Next, we need to consider the radius or diameter of the Ferris wheel. Adding the diameter to the height from the ground gives us our total distance to the maximum point, which is useful for the sine curve. The minimum point will then just be our distance from the bottom of the Ferris wheel to the ground. Finally, we must consider how fast the Ferris wheel is moving in order to properly draw our sine curve. Typically, we might describe this as a certain number of minutes per revolution.